when I think it's about average, big enough. Hey folks, it's Finn. One of the most common questions I get asked about my phalloplasty surgery is, did I get to choose the size? Yes, this video is gonna be another one about my penis. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about some of the options for choosing a phalloplasty penis size. I'm gonna talk about my own decision-making process around phalloplasty size. And towards the end of this video, I'm also gonna talk about some of the reasons why you might just want to stick with an average sized penis. But before we get stuck in to talking about Finn Jr's size, let me first introduce myself. My name is Finn and here on this channel, I share my life in recovery as a transgender gay man. So here you will find loads of videos around gender transition, LGBT life, mental health, recovery and personal development. Loads of really honest, first-hand accounts and practical advice. So if you'd like to see more of that, don't forget to tick the subscribe button and also to tick the notification bell, then you'll be notified whenever I upload anything new. So let's talk about my penis size. First, a brief overview of phalloplasty for those who might be new to this. Phalloplasty is one of the processes of creating a penis for transgender people. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about phalloplasty penis size and whether or not we can choose the size of our penis. So when it comes to phalloplasty, the length and the girth of your penis is very dependent on where you have the graft for the creation of that penis and your own body size. When it comes to the girth of your penis, the thickness of your penis, this depends on where you have the graft taken to create your penis. There are a number of choices, the forearm, the thigh, the side, the back, there's lots of different options in lots of different countries. And how thick your penis is depends on the amount of fat you have in the area that the graft is taken from. Makes sense? So for example, thighs have usually got the most amount of fat. And for this reason, it is phalloplasty made from a graft from the thigh, which will most commonly be the thickest penis. So much so that what often happens is that people who have phalloplasty using the thigh to create the shaft often end up having to have their penis trimmed down later on because it's too girthy. Is girthy a word? And when it comes to creating the length of your penis, most surgeons who perform phalloplasty aim for somewhere between five and six inches, regardless of where it's taken on your body. They don't tend to make penises any bigger than that for reasons that I'll come to shortly. So the type of phalloplasty I had is radial forearm free flap phalloplasty. Try saying that 10 times fast. And this means that my penis was created using a graft from my arm. Now I've had my graft arm tattooed, but you can just about see the line of where my graft on my arm comes to. I'll link you to a picture here so you can see what my graft looked like before my tattoo. And I'll also link you to a playlist so you can see the process of healing of my graft over time and of having the tattoo done. So talking specifically now in terms of phalloplasty created using your graft from a forearm, your size will be limited depending on how much available skin there is, so the length of your forearm, and your girth will be de dependent on how much fat you have on that forearm. Still with me? So I think I have pretty average size forearms and I got a good five and a half inches out of mine. I've also got quite chunky forearms and actually looking at my forearms, they're much chunkier there than they are towards the base of my wrist. And actually my penis follows that guide as well. My penis is much girthier at the base and through the middle and tapers off at the end. Yes, Finn Jr is tapered. Fun story for you, when me and Chris met and we started talking about my surgery and what have you and he'd seen the scar on my arm and I explained that that was what was used for my penis. He looked at it, took a deep breath, swallowed and then said, well, I hope you got turn ups on that. So in terms of choosing the size of your phalloplasty, you really are limited as you see by the amount of fat that's available on your body for the girth and the amount of skin that's available for the length. But, Although you can't actually choose the length in terms of having 
a bigger penis that most surgeons like to cap it at six inches maximum, you can actually choose a smaller penis. Why would you want a smaller one? Well, bear with me on this. In early days, when I was trying to work out if I wanted phalloplasty, the biggest thing that put me off was this arm scar. And in discussing this with my surgeon, I explained that I didn't want metoidioplasty. For me, that was too small for the outcome I wanted. I wanted the outcome of phalloplasty, but was really concerned about using all of my skin, having this big scar, worrying about how my arm would heal. And my surgeon suggested that what he could do was actually create something in the middle. So not a metoidioplasty, not a full phalloplasty, but he could create me a smaller penis of around three and a half to four inches. A smaller penis would mean less scarring on the arm, less trauma to the arm, and it would also mean that the urethral hookup part was a little easier. And this is where we pick up on why the surgeons like to cap phalloplasty penises at six inches. The main reason for this is because the trickiest part of phalloplasty is in creating the urethral hookup so that we can stand to pee. Now, urethral hookup is the part of phalloplasty which causes the most complications. And the reason for that is the urethra is a really tricky little bit of piping and having to create a whole new piece of pipe from the old urethra through the new penis six inches of that, there's a lot can go wrong. I had a lot of complications myself in lower surgery and in the urethral hookup part, and I'll link you to a playlist about all of that. But there are so many risks of strictures and fissulas where you have widening of the urethral pipe or narrowing and restriction in and being able to pee. There were so many issues and therefore, that was also one of the reasons why I was tempted to go for a smaller penis to also hopefully not just not have as much scarring, but also so that there weren't so many issues with the urethral hookup. I will say briefly here now that I'm very, very glad that I didn't choose a smaller penis. Despite all of the complications I've had, they're all over now and it's fine and I made the right decision, but I can see completely why they don't want too much size in a penis because of these extra complications with how much there is then to reroute. And another reason with phalloplasty why we tend to stick to the more average penis size of five to six inches is because it's a lot to pack in your pants. And to explain, as trans men, we are showers, not growers. What this means is whatever size you're created with is the size it always is. With cisgender men, Penises are flaccid or erect. So when they're flaccid, they're smaller. When they're erect, they're bigger. With trans men, that doesn't happen. We can have an erectile device fitted, which allows us to get erect, but all that does is make us hard. It doesn't actually make us smaller and bigger. I'll link to another playlist here about the erectile device and a little bit more detail about that. But basically, yes, whatever size penis is created is the size that it always is for us. And so having anything bigger than five to six inches is just a little bit too much to tame. And we don't want my happiness showing. I think as trans men, it can be really tempting to want to create a decent sized penis and it can be easy to worry about this. I think it's common as trans men, this is certainly something that's been part of my journey, that we can feel less than because we're transgender and not cisgender. We feel like we don't match up and perhaps in choosing a penis, we can then make sure that we do match up. But actually in having an average size penis that actually in turn makes us like every other man because pretty much every man at some point or another will worry about the size of their penis. And so welcome to manhood. So to sum up, Although we can choose a smaller size penis, we can't choose a bigger penis when it comes to having phalloplasty because of the limitations and complications that come with creating a penis that's outside the average of five to six inches. And how big a penis we end up with between that average of five and six inches is all dependent on the amount of skin we have available for the graft and the amount of fat we have available for the girth. 
I really hope that was helpful. Please do let me know. And if you have any comments or questions on this topic or on any other topic, do feel free to leave me a message in the section below. You can also contact me on my social media, on Twitter and on Instagram. If you'd like to see more videos about the lower surgery process, I shall link you to a playlist here. Thank you so much for watching everybody. Take care of yourselves. Keep on keeping on. See you next week.